in out is the best in outboard around with applications for phones and tablets for televisions and desktop computers integrations in the slack and teams and calendars and of course a great website simpleinout.com now your users historically would have an email and password combination that they would use to log in to Simple and Out in all of these places and all of these devices. But now, Simple and Out supports single sign-on technology, which allows your users to use credentials to log in to Simple and Out that they're already using in your other enterprise systems. On top of which, uh, you can also then manage your users outside of Simple and Out, and Simple and Out will take our instructions from your enterprise set. Uh, at this time, we currently support single sign-on through Microsoft's Entra uh, system, uh, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. And so today we're going to take a look at how do you make Simple and Out work with single sign-on and the benefits that you'll derive uh, from that process. So first of all, we're right here on simpleandout.com. Uh, I am logged in as Sarah Smith and I am an administrative user. So here I went ahead and clicked on single sign-on down in the enterprise uh, uh, options here on the left. Now, when you get to this screen, you'll be prompted to make sure you're on a plan that supports single sign-on. We have an enterprise tier of plans that will support single sign-on uh, that you'll need to be a member of. If not, you'll be prompted to uh, switch your plan here. Uh, in this case, I'm already on an enterprise level plan. And as you can see now, I have single sign-on, which is currently off. Now from here, you can pick your provider. At this time, we only support Microsoft. Uh, we may add more providers uh, in the future that support single sign-on. The great thing about our uh, technology is we built it on industry standards. So that should make uh, adding new vendors in the future uh, a little bit more likely. So here, uh, in order to begin, I'll make sure Microsoft is selected here and I'll click connect. Now, of course, I'll get a warning here that says, hey, make sure that if you're connecting, we're gonna be transitioning your users and users, any users you'll have may change how they'll have to log in to Simple and Out. So by doing this, you're gonna to wanna to prep your users for the change that may come as far as when they'll have to change how they log in, uh, which we'll examine here in a little bit in the future. I'll click OK to this. Now, once we're in here, we're gonna be given a number of options down here. Uh, so obviously our provider is listed. We do have a link right here you can click on. This will pop you up into our ReB on how to integrate this. Of course, in order to turn on single sign-on, you'll need to uh, enable this, of course, but you'll also need to make a, a bunch of changes on Microsoft's side in order for Microsoft to contact us and let us know about changes to your users and changes to your groups. So, of course, we have a big readme on that. Microsoft has a readme on their end as well. Uh, the readme will take you step-by-step -step on how to actually do that. That will be beyond this video. Uh, just due to the fact that we don't want to have a video um, on somebody else's single sign-on system because, of course, when they make changes, our video becomes out of date. So we have documentation to try to walk you through how that works. Now, you'll need this URL is where you'll point uh, your Microsoft system to us. Uh, you'll need to copy that out verbatim. There's also a bearer token here that you'll click reveal on, and then you will copy that token out. That is the authentication that is necessary in order for us to know who is contacting us and that they are of sufficient authorization in order to put users and groups into your system. Uh, then we have the default role. So when a user is created from your system, uh, we will automatically assign their role to this role. You can change this by clicking manage roles. We have an entire separate video on creating roles. Your default role will become the user's default role. After a user is updated, if you wish to change that role and provide the user with either more or less privileges, uh, you can absolutely do that in our system. And then very important is this recovery key. If I click reveal on this, you, you absolutely need to copy this recovery key out and put it somewhere safe. So if for some reason you were locked out of your Microsoft system, then you were unable to log in and every user was unable to log in. You would also then of course, by proxy, be unable to log in to anything in Simple and Out, and you would be unable to disconnect single sign-on in order to get access to Simple and Out again. If that ever occurred, then you would need this recovery key because that is the only way you would be able to talk to us in support. We know that we'd be able to use this recovery key to verify that you are who you say you are because you wouldn't be able to log in any longer, and then we'd be able to reset your system and give you access again. So take this recovery key, copy it, 
place it someplace outside of the simple and out that is safe just in case you absolutely need it. Now, once we've done this and once we followed these instructions, then we'll have single sign-on enabled. Now, it's worth noting down here, though, uh, Microsoft's single sign-on system does not support automatically syncing your user images, your profile images, your avatars for your users. And of course, we think avatars are very important because they make your board look so much nicer. So we've built our own avatar syncing engine that you would need to separately enable. This is built on Microsoft's graph system, but you can enable this by clicking this sign in with Microsoft, which will give us permission to see your user photos. And then what we will do is every time you provision a new user, we'll go to your system and we'll grab their updated photo. We also will periodically check in to see if there are any photo changes so that we can grab photo changes if they're made um, outside of the user being created. So you'll definitely wanna make sure you do this. Right now this is off, but if I walk through the system, this will be turned back on if, if I go through that link and then we'll automatically grab your photos for you as well. So let's take a little bit of a look at what this looks like in Simple and Out once we have this enabled. So if I go back up here to the board, what you'll see here is you'll be able to see that we have all of our users here that are there. Now, the users that get created uh, from Microsoft system that gets sent over to Simple and Out, uh, what we will do is we will look at the email address on that user that we're being asked to create. If there's already a user in your system that matches that email, we'll automatically upgrade that user to a single sign-on user. They'll lose their password in Simple and Out. They will now use their Microsoft passwords to log into Simple and Out instead. If we do not find a user that matches that email, we'll assume this is a brand new user we do not know about, and we'll add that user to Simple and Out. The user will receive an email welcoming them to Simple and Out, and it will tell them in the email that they should log in by clicking the sign in with Microsoft button instead of needing to choose a password. Uh, so if for some reason you had a user provisioned that had an email mismatch, so you have now two users in the system, your old Simple and Out user, your brand new Simple and Out with Microsoft user, uh, you'll really have two choices at that moment. You can either tell Microsoft you wish to deprovision that user, in which case we'll remove the new Microsoft user, and then you can edit the existing user, change the email so they match, and then tell Microsoft to provision the user back over. That's the correct way to do it, and that will preserve the user's history, which you probably do not want to lose. On the other hand, if you don't really care about the user's history, or if they're brand new users and they don't really have a history, you can just delete the Simple and Out user, of course, in our system, and then just keep your brand new Microsoft user. That'll be entirely up to you, and largely that's going to come down to how long you've been a Simple and Out customer. For a user that has not been provisioned with single sign-on, so let's pick on Ava Hall for a second here. If I click Edit This User, You'll see I can edit this user and I can do all manner of things to this user as you've always been able to do in Simple and Out. I can change the user's email and the user's name and their description. I can archive or delete the user, etc. That's because this user is not managed by single sign-on. Now, if Ava is a real user on Microsoft's end, uh, you want to make sure those emails match so that when Microsoft sends us the user for single sign-on, we will upgrade Eva or Ava to a single sign-on user as I indicated previously. Now, on the other hand, Let's pick on Anthony Morris here. So Anthony Morris has been upgraded. If we click edit user here, this is what a single sign-on user will look like now. As you can see, I can no longer edit Anthony Morris's information. And that's a good thing because again, that information comes directly from your system, your single sign-on system with Microsoft. We no longer allow you to control that information here. But what we do allow you to control are the pieces of information that only Simple and Out manages. In this case, the user's permissions. By default, we will, of course, default them to your default role, but you can change this right now. So if you want them to have more or less privileges, that's entirely up to you. Also, the language. This is largely dictated by the user themselves. We'll default them to the language of people already in your organization. But if the user wants to switch themselves to French, so maybe they better read French in our system, they can entirely do that on their own. You can change it, of course, as an administrator if you wish, but we allow that information to set there. Now, one final thing that I'll note about our single sign-on integration is that our single sign-on integration supports groups as well. So your groups are also going to come from Microsoft Systems. So if I go ahead and click Settings here again in the upper right, and now I go down to Groups, you'll notice that your groups are managed by single sign-on. Now, these groups that I have right here are not yet managed by single sign-on. Um, I will I could destroy them if I want. They were pre-existing groups before I turned on the single sign-on system. Once I've gotten rid of those, though, all of my group assignments will come from Microsoft. So Microsoft will say, here's a brand new group. 
called, let's as an example, managers, and it will also manage who is a member of that group. So you can use Microsoft system to manage your users, add your users, add their group assignments, dictate which groups and which users sync to simple and out. We will take those instructions and we will make sure our system matches. That goes for active users. It goes for inactive users, which you can use, in which case we will archive. And of course, you could also delete or deprovision a user in Microsoft system, and we will delete the user and their records in simple and out accordingly. So the advantages of single sign-on, you have the ability to manage your users and manage your groups outside of simple and out in a system you're already using to manage them. And your users will be able to sign in with a password that uh, they already have and they already utilize. And to show that process here to end the video, I'm going to click log out here to log us out of the system. And now I'll click log in. And as you'll see from the login here, we have a login button as well as a sign in with Microsoft button. So your users who are on single sign on will be able to click the sign in with Microsoft button. If they've already signed in with this particular web browser before, this process will just redirect them through a thing and bring them right into their simple and out account. And if they haven't logged in before, they'll ask to log in with their Microsoft credentials. That supports everything from your password complexity to your password rotations to things like two-factor authentication and MFA. Again, your password rules in your Microsoft system supported here in Simple and Out. And once they do, it'll bring them right into our system. And that again goes for here. It goes for our, all of our native apps. It goes for all of our integrations, including our integration with Microsoft Teams. So that is single sign-on with user provisioning in Simple and Out.